Hello everybody, this is Dr. Tani Isa, professor of pathology. I make these videos for all medical students. Hope someone may find it helpful. We talked about etiology and pathogenesis of tuberculosis, and today we are going to talk about morphology of tuberculosis. Primary tuberculosis. Primary tuberculosis occurs in previously unexposed and therefore unsensitized person. So please remember that. Primary tuberculosis can be defined as infection of an individual lacking previous contact with tubercle bacilli. Please remember that primary tuberculosis occur as infection of an individual lacking previous contact with tubercle bacilli. In countries where infected milk has been eliminated, primary tuberculosis almost always begins in the lungs. So it will be primary pulmonary tuberculosis. So in these countries, you will never see primary intestinal tuberculosis. In primary pulmonary tuberculosis, you know the way of infection is by airborne infection or aerosol. When people with active disease cough, sneeze, speak, sing, or spit, they propel TB germs in the air. A person needs to inhale a few of these germs to be infected, and the organisms will pass through the airway and settle in the lungs. And an area of inflammation or a consolidation is formed in the lower part of the upper lobe or in the upper part of the lower lobe, and it is usually subpleural, and this area is called gone focus. Uh, this area is granulomatous inflammation, and in the, in the majority of cases, it shows central caseation necrosis. Caseation necrosis is just a breakdown of tissue, which gives a cheesy-like material. It is midway between coagulative necrosis and liquefactive necrosis, and it is cheesy-like. That's why we call it caseous necrosis. And this area will be drained, and the organisms, either free or inside the macrophage, will be drained through these lymphatics to the hilar lymph nodes. And so these lymphatics may get infected as well. And we call it tuberculous lymphangitis. And when drained to the lymph node, to the hilar lymph nodes, the hilar lymph nodes get enlarged and inflamed. And we call it tuberculous lymph adenitis. So in primary pulmonary tuberculosis, we will see gone focus, which is a subpleural area of caseation necrosis and granulomatous inflammation, and tuberculous lymph angitis and tuberculous lymph adenitis. And we call this primary pulmonary complex. So this is the lung, shows this area of gone focus, which appears as pale yellow, yellow area of granulomatous inflammation or caseation necrosis, usually in the lower part of the upper loop or in the upper part of the lower loop, and it is usually subpleural. And what we actually see is this gone focus and the hilar enlarged lymph node. And we call this primary pulmonary complex. So primary pulmonary complex is gone focus plus TB lymph adenitis. This is the primary pulmonary complex, which is caseous subpleural gone focus plus enlarged hilar lymph node. And here you can see it very beautiful. We call this primary pulmonary complex or just a primary complex or gone complex. So it is the caseous subpleural gone focus plus enlarged hilar lymph node. And this is the characteristic gross pathology of primary pulmonary tuberculosis. So what is the gross pathology of primary pulmonary tuberculosis? It is primary pulmonary complex, which consists of caseous subpleural gone focus plus enlarged hilar lymph nodes. What is the microscopic pathology? The microscopic pathology is the characteristic granulomatous inflammatory reaction, which forms either caseating or non-caseating tubercles. In the majority of cases, it is caseating granuloma, which form tubercle-like, or we call it granuloma or tubercles. This is caseating granuloma, and this is characteristic caseating tubercle at low magnification. 
What is the granuloma? What is the definition of granuloma? Granuloma is a special type of chronic specific inflammation. You know the inflammation is either acute or chronic, and we classify chronic inflammation to chronic specific inflammation and chronic non-specific inflammation. Granuloma is chronic specific inflammation characterized by focal aggregation of macrophage together with other inflammatory cells as lymphocytes, plasma cells, giant cells and fibroblasts forming nodules or tubercles. Individual tubercles are microscopic. Only when they fuse together, they become macroscopically visible. So this is caseating tubercle. Illustrate this is the central area of caseation necrosis surrounded by epithelioid cells. Epithelioid cells are modified macrophage or changed macrophage, which the macrophage changed to epithelioid cells, which appear uh, elongated with elongated nuclei and vacuolated cytoplasm, ill-defined cell border. This is beautiful here, beautiful epithelioid cells. And the macrophage may uh, aggregate together to form giant cells. And uh, uh, this uh, epithelioid cell usually surrounded by lymphocytes also and fibroblasts. This is a high magnification of granuloma and here you can see the epithelioid cells are very beautiful and here the uh, cytoplasm is vacuolated and this is because of the death of tubercle bacilli inside these uh, epithelioid cells and uh, you know the tubercle bacilli contain a lipid fraction which gives uh, this vacuolated appearance to the epithelioid cells and uh, here is giant cell and this is another giant cell and we call this foreign body giant cell when you see the nuclei arranged haphazardly in the cytoplasm we call it foreign body giant cell not all tubercular granuloma might show central caseation. Here is a tubercular granuloma, very beautiful epithelioid cells, lymphocytes, but here you can't see caseation necrosis. This is non-caseating granuloma. And this also other tubercular granuloma, which show epithelioid cells and giant cells, lymphocytes, and fibroblast, but no central caseation necrosis. So irrespective of the presence or absence of caseous necrosis, acid fast stain must be performed when granuloma are present. Here you can see the, the tubercle bacilli, very beautiful red rods with zeal Nelson stain. So always do acid fast stain or zeal Nelson stain to demonstrate the mycobacteria which appear as red rods inside the macrophage. This is the edge of a granuloma, and here you can see the area of caseation necrosis. And we said it is caseous because this is cheesy like. It is midway between coagulative and liquefactive. It gives a cheesy like appearance in gross pathology. But in microscopic pathology, we can describe it as homogeneous or sometimes granular eosinophilic uh, material, which is necrosis area surrounded by epithelioid cells, lymphocytes, and fibroblasts. Here you can see the macrophage organized into committee called the giant cell, and this is beautiful Langhan giant cell in which the nuclei are arranged around the periphery of the cell. Sometimes the nuclei form a complete circle or an arc of a circle, as you see here, uh, we call it horseshoe appearance. This is Langhan giant cell, which is characteristic of infectious diseases, of infectious granuloma. This Langhan giant cell, Please don't confuse Langerhans giant cell with Langerhans cell. Langerhans cell is just a, a macrophage. It is antigen presenting cell in the skin. But this is Langerhans giant cell formed of uh, aggregation of uh, a macrophage to form this pattern of uh, giant cell with the nuclei arranged at the periphery in a circle or an arc of a circle called horseshoe. 
this uh, occur in uh, infectious granuloma. It is characteristic of tuberculosis, but it is not pathognomonic of tuberculosis because we can see it in other diseases. It is characteristic of tuberculosis. We can see lung hand giant cells. So when we see lung hand giant cells, epithelioid cells, and uh, also caseation necrosis, we think of tuberculosis. But it is not pathognomonic. What is the meaning of pathognomonic? Pathognomonic means it occurs only in tuberculosis. And this is very untrue because you can see lung hand giant cells in other infectious granulomas. This is lung hand giant cell and uh, it occurs in infectious granulomas. This is foreign body giant cell you have seen before, and this is lung hand giant cell. So this is foreign body and lung hand giant cells, and this is area of caseation necrosis. So when we see this lesion, we think of tuberculosis. So this is the foreign body giant cell you have seen before, and this is the epithelioid cells. And what are the other giant cells which you may see in other diseases? This we call a Teuton giant cell. This occurs in xanthogranuloma. When you look at this giant cell, you can see the nuclei arranged in a circle. And inside the circle, you can see the cytoplasm is normal. And here the cytoplasm inside the circle is normal. And here the cytoplasm inside the circle is normal. But outside the circle, you can see the cytoplasm cytoplasm is very vacuolated here. The cytoplasm is vacuolated. Why it is vacuolated? Because of lipid. This occurs in xanthogranuloma. This is another giant cell called Warthin-Finkley giant cell, and it occurs in measles virus infection. In measles virus infection, this, uh, this is hyperplastic lymph node in measles virus infection, and this is pneumonia called hexanomonia in measles virus infection. And this type of giant cell, you can see uh, intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusion. This is Warthin Finkley giant cell. This is the tuberculous lymph adenitis. You know the tubercles formed or the granuloma formed also in the lymph node, and they fuse together to uh, form larger and larger granuloma, and we call this tuberculous lymph adenitis. In immunocompromised people, we do not see this characteristic granuloma because they do not form granuloma. They do not form granuloma. They do, because of the of the deficiency of T cells, T cells, T helper cells. So we can only see macrophage. Um, uh, which is packed with uh, mycobacteria. So this is sheets of foamy macrophage seen packed with, my with mycobacteria. The mycobacteria will proliferate inside the macrophage unchecked because of loss of T cell immunity. Why it is foamy? Why it looks foamy? Because you know these organisms contain lipid fraction and this gives the macrophage a foamy pattern and when we stain with acid fast stain we can see the organism taking this red uh, appearance red rods so this is acid fast stain you know during the first few weeks there is also lymphatic and hematogenous dissemination to other parts of the body and despite the seeding of other organs no lesions develop the organisms may, re may die uh, completely inside these uh, tissues or may remain dormant for some time to appear when the immunity of the patient decreases as uh, isolated organ tuberculosis. What is the fate of primary pulmonary tuberculosis? It is either localization or progression. So the fate of primary pulmonary tuberculosis is either localization or progression. In the majority of cases, in 95% of cases, because of the development of cell-mediated immunity, uh, cell-mediated immunity control the infection. So it will be localization. And the gone complex undergo progressive fibrosis followed by dystrophic calcification. So here you can see 
is the primary complex. Here is the Cassiotian necrosis, and here is the enlarged lymph node. And here, the lesion in 95% of cases, it heal giving scar uh, here in, in a place of gone focus and scar in the lymph node. This occur in 95% of cases. And here's the lung. You can see the uh, the lesion become fibrosed and calcified, and we call it ranky complex. You can see uh, this is the place of gone focus become calcified, and it appears radiologically as ranky complex. Calcified, gone focus, and the calcified, uh, fibrosed calcified lymph node. This is ranky complex. It gives us impression uh, of remote tuberculous infection. In other cases, in 5% of cases, the disease progress to prime, progressive primary tuberculosis. And this is the progressive primary tuberculosis. Here, the progressive primary tuberculosis. Progressive primary tuberculosis appears as bacterial pneumonia. It takes the middle and lower lobe pneumonia. And it is difficult to diagnose in adults. So diagnosis of progressive primary tuberculosis in adults is difficult because it is very similar to bacterial pneumonia with the consolidation of the middle and lower lobes. And it may also give lymphohematogenous dissemination and massive hematogenous dissemination gives what we call miliary tuberculosis. And miliary tuberculosis may occur in the lungs, means pulmonary miliary tuberculosis, or it may disseminate to the systemic circulation giving systemic miliary tuberculosis. And uh, miliary tuberculosis occurs when organisms reach the bloodstream, either in primary or in secondary tuberculosis. Here is primary pulmonary tuberculosis here. This is the gone focus, and this is enlarged lymph node, and this means that it is primary tuberculosis. And what's this? You can see multiple small, this is small, caseating area, this is small granuloma, multiple, many of the small granuloma, this is the miliary tuberculosis. So this is primary tuberculosis plus miliary tuberculosis. And it also occurs with secondary or cavitary tuberculosis. We are going to talk about miliary tuberculosis in a separate video. So please remember that in primary tuberculosis, the gross pathology is primary pulmonary complex, and the microscopic pathology is caseating and non-caseating tubercles, and that immunocompromised people do not form the characteristic granuloma. And please remember that elderly and immunosuppressed persons may develop primary tuberculosis more than once, as we said in the pathogenesis of tuberculosis, because they may they lose their immunity and so they develop primary tuberculosis more than once and that the source of infection is exogenous. Thank you so much. In the other video we are going to talk about secondary tuberculosis.